attending this webinar on install antenna performances and radio frequency interference. Uh, let me spend just a, a minute to thank the IEEE Bangalore section of APS and M MTT Society to invite me for this webinar and uh, uh, Dr. Chandrakant Kumar, Dr. Ashutosh Kedar, and uh, Kirti Priya, and uh, apologize for the wrong pronunciation of the name. I, as you know, I am from Italy, so I'm not a native English speaker. Uh, I apologize in advance uh, if something of, of my webinar will not be clear. Um, in this uh, painful period of COVID, uh, um, it, it is so amazing and important to maintain our network, our community. And uh, this kind of webinar help us to stay in touch and in contact. I think this is a privilege and I'm very grateful to everyone to be here and to the IEEE uh, section of Bangalore to allow me to do the presentation. Um, so the agenda of the today presentation will be uh, focused on the install antenna performances, but there is a message behind the presentation that goes uh, beyond the technical topic of uh, installing antennas on a platform. Um, this is a very interesting problem, by the way. You see on the right part of your slide how many antennas are installed aboard of a transport category aircraft and a Boeing 787, uh, and how many uh, RF system have to stay together and work properly uh, when installed on board of a platform. And this is not just uh, for the avionics, it's also for a car, for ship, for satellite. Nevertheless, there is a something behind this, and this is a, all about uh, the usage of modeling. Uh, we, we, which kind of model we want to use really? Uh, do we need the very complicated? Can we use something simple? Uh, and is really strictly necessary and always necessary to use a PC, a complicated, a very costly high-end PC and a very um, uh, 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 nice and uh, mature uh, uh, commercial software simulator to do analysis for radio frequency interference. And above all, where the, da where the data for the analysis comes from and what to do when this data does not exist or not available. My presentation, the last part of my presentation, I'll show you an example of high fidelity modeling of a radio frequency interference problem between a UHF and a GPS antenna mounted on board of an helicopter. And the last part of the uh, session will be dedicated to question and answer. Uh, I work for EMA Incorporated, which is a company with uh, Edu Quarter in Denver, in Colorado, and offices in Europe. We are involved mainly in modeling software, consulting so services, and measurements. And uh, our expertise uh, goes from lightning to earth to electromagnetic pulse, EMC, and spacecraft charging. I'm, I'm showing this slide on purpose because um, EMA is now hiring for several positions. And so I would encourage uh, young engineers to have a look on our website, which is ema3d.com to see if there is something interesting for you. And also because on the ema3d.com, you will find a lot of uh, resources about uh, E3 for aerospace, including a book that does not exist anymore in printed version, that is a handbook on protection of aircraft that you can download from the website. So I encourage, I encourage everyone to visit uh, imatrady.com. Okay, so what, what is the, the scenario we are talking about? Why we are afraid about installing antennas on a platform, regardless what the platform is? Well, you we all know that we design antenna to have a nice, uh, performances in free space. And uh, even when we measure, we eventually mount the antenna on a ground plane, but we, we measure it essentially as a free space. So if we do an omnidirectional antenna, if we design an omnidirectional antenna, then we 
measure it in free space, we got uh, uh, exactly what we have designed for. But the antenna need to be mounted on a platform. And when this happened, the interaction with the, the platform structure actually degradates the performance of the antenna. The antenna is not anymore omnidirectional. Uh, there is a reduction in gain, pattern distortion, and so on and so on. So uh, how to handle this uh, particular problem? As always in an engineering problem, we have two possibilities, measurements and analytical or numerical modeling. And of, of course, and that's the message uh, that I hope at the end of the presentation will, will appear clear, um, engineer must have in his pocket both tools. Nevertheless, it's clear that to make the measurements of an antenna mounted on an ICRA, you need the ICRA, right? And uh, you need the side to make measurements. And measurements are expensive and sometimes are impossible just, just because the, the prototype of the ICRA does not exist yet. Um, measurement is complicated, exactly as doing a good modeling. The modeling has the advantage to be virtual to be in some way inexpensive and to uh, uh, allow to repeat uh, the, the analysis with the several possibilities. And that's what we expect to see when we install something on a platform. So instead of the red, the nice line, which is uh, the free space performances, we get ringing every, every, everywhere, null in an expected uh, uh, angle, uh, reduction of the uh, shape and degradation of the shape of the of the of the far field pattern. Um, nevertheless, whenever we see the results, we should be able to understand why, and uh, we we see this uh, these results. And, and perhaps uh, in, in this particular slide on the left side, you see there are some null in some direction. Well, whenever you look at the numerical results, ask yourself why. Why there is this null in this direction? Is this because the antenna is looking in one of the uh, tail structure, perhaps? So always be able to justify what the results are. And what is radio frequency interference? Well, uh, the, the installation of the antennas on board of a, a platform uh, is all about the antenna, but then the antennas are attached to transmitter and the receivers. And so what here he really matter is not just the antenna not being deformed by the structure, but is the radio frequency system to work together when installed on board on platform. So it's not just matter of the antenna coupling or the antenna distortion, it's matter of how much the receiver will see the noise emitted by a transmitter. Uh, how uh, can, can these two guys stay together? That's what the engineer are looking for. So there uh, is a system level problem where many actors play a role. And, and what engineers want to know when talking about radio frequency interference, uh, first, can we install all the system we need on board of the satellite, on board of the ship, on board of the aircraft? Uh, what, 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 what will be the problem? And uh, on what specific channels the problem will happen? Uh, and, and what, what is the level of problem? Is this a, a 30 dB interference or is it 3 dB interference? And what finally can I do to mitigate the problem? Being an engineer, we have the destiny to work and to find a solution to tricky problems. And we will never work through the perfect solution. Being an engineer means to find the best compromise from to, between the performance you would like to achieve and the constraint that you have to consider. And that's exactly what happens for this kind of problem. So when you install antennas on board or, or on a platform, some antennas must be on the upper side, must, other antennas must be on the lower side. The, the space is very limited. You cannot move the antenna everywhere you want. Nevertheless, the system needs to work. And that's to find not the, the, the perfect solution, but the most usable and uh, suitable and applicable solution. That's what we work for. And that's what makes our work so nice and amazing. Um, 
there, there is uh, always uh, we, we start the, 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 the history of uh, numerical modeling in electromagnetics started the early 70s. So we have 50 years of history. Nevertheless, we're still questioning of what is about modeling. What, 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 what is the value of doing simulation? Uh, nothing happened by chance, and just three days before this webinar, on a, a, an interesting uh, list in, on internet, the signal integrity list, on, 20, on the 18th of February, uh, they started a discussion, simulation, what to use them for, and what not to use them for. Um, and uh, it started three uh, days ago. It was all about simulation usability and comparison with measurements, and believe me, after three days and several dozen of good comments, we are still questioning about this uh, with many, many good uh, arguments and uh, many, many good considerations. So the, the, there is a still a debate in the community. And in my opinion, this depends on the meaning of the words. Um, I am an Italian person. Uh, and Italy is a very old country with a very old culture. We take seriously the meaning of the words, the real meaning of the words. And you can understand me because you are from India, which is a culture even older than Italy. And actually, our words mainly come from Sanskrit, so we share probably uh, the same roots. Well, in Italian, simulation means something very quite bad is the attitude of someone doing something fake especially in football uh, to convince the referee to give a, a penalty that you should not get uh, this is an example of one uh, player of champions league doing something fake to convince the referee to give a maximum penalty and that what the real meaning of simulation so instead of simulation what we should use is a modeling and modeling is very different in meanings in Italian. So modeling means someone that takes action to look at the reality and try to, cost, to construct something, the model that replicate within the limit of the accuracy you need. And that's the key point. Within the limit of the desired accuracy, the behavior of a device or a phenomenon, that's modeling. And this is, for any kind of models you can think about, thermal, structural, mechanical, chemical, coupled problem. Every time we are not simulating the reality. We are not doing something fake. We are modeling the reality. We want deliberately and with a certain uh, degree of accuracy to to uh, uh, write something, either an equation or using a numerical approach to model the reality. And uh, what we get is the information from the data we got from the numerical simulation, the information we need in our design. That's what we wanted to do. And when you think what we have done along these 50 years is so amazing, the uh, evolution of the modeling, the numerical modeling. This is a, a, a so-called stick model of an aircraft, was used in the early 70s by Dr. Rod Perala and others to perform analysis of electromagnetic pulse. And from this stick model, they got very good information on what to do with their aircraft. In the 80s, they used a very simple brick model of F-16 to perform lightning analysis. And after 50 years, we are now using and performing analysis and models the reality very accurately and, got in, and getting very good results. This, this is not related to a particular software. In the market and in the universities, you can find a lot, a lot of good numerical tools that will help you to reproduce the reality. All these models, despite the fact that they are very simple at the beginning and maybe a little bit more complicated today, well, all these models must be judged not because they are nice reproducing the reality, but for the data they get, if it's useful or not useful. So there is a very famous statement in the community saying all models are, and that, that's very, very true, all models are wrong but some are useful. Why all models are wrong 
is because when you model something, you neglect part of the reality and you took just what is important. But we, we should never give up, never give up to look at the reality and extract what is really important. Look at this. This is a, a reflector antenna that was simulated in all the details with 2.7 million unknown, and you got the uh, uh, good uh, modeling of the reflector and the good far field. But my question is, can be done in a different way? Yes, it can be done in a different way, because if I want to look at the pattern, uh, I don't need to take into account the structs, maybe. But what I really need to know is the the field distribution on the aperture. And this can be done with a, a, a tool that model the entire antenna like a circle and put on the, on, on the circle, even without considering the curvature of the, of the, of the reflector and applying the Woodward Lawson theory that is a classical application of Maxwell equation, uh, we can actually calculate the um, the far field pattern of the reflector antenna quite accurately. And what else? Since we will never believe in simulation without having checked for it, so what, how, how we know that this simple circle does the job is because we will look at the maximum gain, and this maximum gain can be calculated by analytical formula. And if the results obtained by the circle similar modeling and the analytical calculation are the same. Well, I will be confident in my simple uh, model. I like, I like this model. I like to be very, uh, pres very um, uh, precise with my model. I like the fact that I can do 2.7 million unknown. I like more this model because it's more powerful in my design form. It is always, we, we, it, it, when I started my career in 1995, my computer was uh, two gigabyte of disk, 128 megabyte of RAM. Uh, and I feel myself like NASA, you know? Uh, and uh, if I look at my uh, uh, smartphone today, he has probably, it is much, much more powerful than the PC when I started. Uh, and this is at in the same time a, an opportunity, especially for young engineers, the vast, uh, the, the, the availability of a large machine and very good uh, simulation software is certainly an opportunity, sometimes it's a threat. Uh, and the problem is that we, we should be confident in the process. So let's give an answer and the process must start not directly with complicated modeling must start with analytical calculation. Uh, and just when you have done your homework, using uh, your knowledge and experience and know how the problem will look like, then we go for accurate numerical modeling. Doing just analytical will be not enough. Doing just high fidelity modeling is not enough. Together, you get the knowledge of the reality, you will drive your problem. And so let's give an answer to the, this question. Do we really need a PC all time to do antenna sighting analysis? And the obvious answer is no, we do not need this. So when we do an interference analysis, what we are looking for is the margin, the interference margin, which is the difference between the sensitivity of the air receiver and the noise injected by a transmitter. Well, this can be calculated as a sum of several contributions, and all this contribution can be calculated by analytical formula, especially the antenna-to-antenna -antenna coupling, which is one of the main players here. So the antenna-to-antenna -antenna coupling can be calculated with a simple application of a freeze formula. Uh, on the web, there are many, many uh, calculator available, but basically you need the simply a scientific calculator, an end calculator. You only have to do some multiplication, use logarithm, dB, and some uh, sum and differences, and you will get quite a good evaluation of the coupling between uh, two antennas, at least in certain situations, or if you want, at least to perform an initial screening of your problem. 
if you remember the Boeing, on the Boeing there was uh, 20, 25 antennas. If you just go to modeling all the 25 antennas on the ICRA using uh, a fantastic uh, full wave simulator, you will never uh, arrive to a, 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 a solution. You will never uh, perform your work. If you use your analytical tool and your knowledge and your experience to see between the thousands of different cases that you have to analyze, which one are really uh, critical, then you will do your job in time and correctly. Uh, just to make an example, we, uh, let, let's suppose that we have two antennas with this uh, uh, value as uh, working frequency for the transmitter, 35 dBm as the power, uh, the antenna gain uh, taken from the data sheet of the transmitting antenna in the direction of the receiver was minus 40 dBi. Uh, susceptibility of the uh, receiver minus 10 dBm because it was out of band. The antenna gain uh, at 2.2 gigahertz minus 5 dBi and the distance 2.2 meters. This was two antenna mounted on board on, on a satellite. Well, doing the calculation, the end calculation, we arrived to an interference margin of 20.2 dBm. By the way, a, a positive interference margin means problem. Uh, a negative interference margin will, means no interference of course. But I, I can say, okay, I did all this calculation with a lot of assumption. The coupling was calculated with the freeze formula that only work in free space and when the antenna are far from each other. The, uh, uh, the antenna gain in out of band was just evaluated uh, roughly. Uh, the two antenna were not in far field, they were in near field on the satellite. And all the calculation maybe is affected too many assumptions to be real. Well, as a matter of fact, I calculated this interference margin using a full wave analysis tool and I got 27 dBm. Certainly, I got a different uh, value. Certainly, the in, surely the interference margin is, uh, is is different, is larger, is uh, it's much more than uh, than calculated by analytical calculation. But what I, uh, I learned from analytical calculation is, wait, look, these two antenna can have a problem, and the problem is a serious because the interference margin is 20 dBm. And what the full wave analysis say to me, yes, what you have seen as a problem is a real problem and you must take care of it. So it's the process that allow me to drive the problem of the antennas mounted on board of the aircraft on board the satellite. And the process say me, what you have seen as a problem at the beginning remain on the problem when you use a more accurate modeling tool and you better find a solution for it. So whenever you do modeling, whenever you do use modeling, there is a question that you have to have in mind. It is right or it is not right. Out of a modeling tool, you get a very nice uh, radiation pattern, very good uh, uh, field distribution. You can do animation. You can do whatever you want today. But the same, always the same question is on the table. Is it right or not right? This is the question. Uh, you, you recognize this is a picture from a, a movie, Hamlet movie. Okay. And uh, today, uh, the, 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 the software simulation tool available on the market, including the ema 3D cable, which is our own software, is able to give you all the results you want. But my golden rule in these 25 years being an electromagnetic engineer and getting my salary out of simulation is, I do not believe simulation. I assume that all the results are wrong and I force myself to, say, to, to justify why they are correct. If I'm doing a, a, a lambda by four monopole on a ground plane and I got a gain of 10 dBi, well, Either I find a, a new results that I should publish on the IEEE transaction, or most likely something is wrong. 
Look at this that I find on the, on a LinkedIn post. Someone said, uh, 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 announced the results of his, uh, uh, of his uh, antenna and uh, said, I got 19 DBI enhancement of my gain. And this person, Dr. Kagan Topalli, uh, replied, how is the gain enhanced from this? And what, what he, he got an answer and he said, the results were shocking me too. I think this is because of the perfect position and blah, 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 blah. And Dr. Topali just replied, look, you should look better to your results and justify why you got 30 DVI from each slot. Uh, and he makes some, some very easy uh, analytical calculation. And uh, he said, well, guy, I don't see that the area of the slot is that much larger. So Dr. Topali did what we as engineer, as electromagnetic engineer, have to do every time when we use a simulation, but also every time when we use measurements. When you measure something, not necessarily you are taking, you are getting the correct results. Measurement is difficult. Measurement requires knowledge and capability. Modeling is difficult. Modeling requires knowledge and capability and doped always measurements doped always simulation believe them when you know why you got the results you are observing being engineers electromagnetic engineers we have one very good tool to use and these are the maxwell equations so whatever we do must be compliant with the maxwell equation and uh, always we have to thank this guy, James Clark Maxwell, to provide, and the others, to provide us with this magnificent tool that allow us to say, okay, I'm right. Tonight I can sleep, sleep well. The results I give to my manager are correct because they are in accordance with the Maxwell theory. To do a good modeling, we need data. And uh, without data, there is no way. So it, 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 it is quite, this is quite, uh, uh, quite uh, uh, obvious and perhaps trivial. Um, but um, I, I use this no data, no party, because this is a nice advertisement about uh, a, a champagne produced by an Italian company. And this was the one of the uh, advertisement in the early 60s, and I put it in my presentation because I find it very nice. But anyhow, um, what, what, what is the role of the input data and how I collect the input data? Whenever we do uh, uh, installed antenna performance, the first phase does not involve a numerical model. The first, the first phase is collecting all the data we can for the antennas and in many cases for the antennas and for the transmitter and for the receiver and in many cases those uh, information are not fully available when you look at the uh, 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 data sheet of an antenna especially for commercial of the shelf uh, especially in the area of uh, transport category aircraft you will not never get too much information nevertheless with information on the data sheet and your knowledge about the antenna and the um, uh, fantastic uh, uh, handbook about the antenna that are available in our community, you can build up a model of your antenna. And the same is about uh, uh, the uh, transmitter and the receiver. Let me show you this. Okay, so the, um, the black, uh, lines represent the transmitter spectrum, the spectrum of a transmitter accordingly to the mill standard 461 uh, or accordingly to this, uh, the, the spec sheet of the transmitter, because in the spec sheet of the transmitter, the, the company who provides the transmitter only has to say if they are compliant or not compliant with the standard. And so they will provide you the fundamental uh, frequency and some harmonics, most of the time, accordingly to the mid standard 461. Well, 
There is no information about the spurious in the black line. And when you measure the transmitter, you got the orange uh, characterization. So the power of the fundamental is exactly the same. The power of the harmonic is, is much different. And the spurious are uh, everywhere. And with, without those information, we can do our analysis. We can get very important information. But when we go to the final step, well, we will need to know also where the spurious are. And to do this, uh, we need to use measurements. Modeling and measurements are not two different things. Modeling and measures must stay together. And measurement can be used to improve the quality of modeling, like in this case, when if you introduce in your model the measured transmitted power of the transmitter, you will get much better results. Uh, a, 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 a another uh, situation where uh, uh, measurements can improve the quality of uh, a, a modeling is in, in the case of cable. When, when you have a cable and the cable is shielded to an overbraid, uh, can we assume that there is no coupling because we use it an overbraid? Well, we cannot. And this is because the overbraid, there is a transfer impedance between the external side and the internal side of the cable in presence of the shield, in presence of the overbrain. Well, this can be measured. And when we use these measurements in the model, well, our model will be much more accurate. Again, is a process. We will start assuming the perfect shield. We'll look at the criticalities. We will see what are the very critical case, and we will remove, remove the assumption about the shield of the cable, and we will insert the transfer impedance uh, eventually measure for this cable. And then we will look at, again at the criticalities and see if we can solve the problem or if the problem goes away because of uh, uh, um, the, the accuracy of our analysis. So it's always a process that takes time. So let me go now to an example of uh, high fidelity modeling. And before to start, let me wrap up the first part of uh, my presentation. So in the first part of my presentation, we have discussed about the role of uh, simulation. We have decided to not use the word simulation and use the word modeling because it's much more appropriate. We have seen that uh, modeling can be performed also using analytical method. And this is not just an opportunity, it's a must. So when we use uh, modeling for antenna installed performance and radio frequency interference, as well as when we use modeling in any other uh, field of engineering application, we should start with uh, uh, considering the model, making our analytical calculation, get the first results, and then at the end of this, going in the high fidelity model, which is the last part of the process, as well the last part of my presentation. So here we will have an example on a Abash-like helicopter. So there is a transmitter, uh, UHF, UHF band transmitter that is located uh, uh, on the body of the aircraft in the back and uh, a GPS receiver uh, L1, L2, uh, as a frequency band, plays it on the tail. Um, and, and of course, we, we, we have the entire system that is made by the antennas, the transmitting and the receiving antennas, and by the transmitter and the receiver. Okay, so for the antennas, we use the uh, black box model, which is a way for a company producing antennas to provide the uh, system engineers that have to perform the installation of those antennas uh, without uh, um, uh, discover, without deliver the geometry of the antenna. So protecting the intellectual property. In, the, in our community, this way to uh, provide information about the antenna is becoming popular. And so I encourage you, whenever you work on a, uh, installed antenna performance analysis, 
contact your provider and ask them for black box model of the antennas. Not only HFSS, but uh, perhaps also other tool can provide these uh, CST or FECO or whatever. This will give you the, all the information you need without uh, delivering or without violating any intellectual property. So the, the company providing antennas are normally willing to help you with this model. So we put this model on the top of the ICRA and use the HFSS to calculate the uh, far field. Again, these results are, have been uh, um, uh, calculated with a particular software, but you can do this with any software you have. You will get similar results. And what we observed, we observed a, a, a small uh, um, um, deformation of the distortion of the pattern so the, the red one is the antenna only, and the blue one is an installed uh, pattern. So the antenna engineer was quite happy. The, the antenna seems to work, no problem. And the same we did for the uh, BHF, UHF antenna placed on the back of the helicopter and got something a little bit more distorted, uh, but still uh, quite good. So the, the antenna engineers, said, okay, well, good, I, I designed a good antenna, it, it works correctly, uh, uh, no problem, uh, I am happy with this. But then the system engineer comes to in and say, okay, well, what about the coupling of the, between the two antennas? And especially what about the coupling in the receiving band? And that's because um, the coupling was calculated, of course, on the overall band from, from 200 megahertz to 1.8 gigahertz. Because uh, remember, the um, uh, radio frequency interference is by nature a large bandwidth problem. We have to take care of the coupling, not only at the transmitting frequency and at the receiver frequency, but on the entire band, because the transmitter will have some uh, um, harmonics. And of course, the receiver will have a sensitivity mask that will cover a large uh, frequency band. Nevertheless, so what, what we get here is a, a coupling of uh, negative minus 73 to minus seven to minus 95 to negative 95. Again, we said was that, wow, good. It's a, it's a good isolation, uh, maybe still not problem, but we still are looking at the problem from the antenna point of view. As a matter of fact, the problem does involve something more than just the antenna. So whenever someone asks you, what is your coupling between these two antennas and ask you for a number, and then we'll ask you, is this coupling good enough? Your answer should be, I cannot answer this question. This is not a very well posed question. It's no matter how much is the, the isolation is a matter of how much noise will be injected in the receiver compared to the receiver sensitivity. So the install antenna performance and the radio, better, the radio frequency interference is not a problem related to the antenna. It's a system level problem, must be handled at the system level, must be analyzed at the system level. And what is the analysis of the system level? Take into account all the chain, the transmitting chain and the receiving chain. And this example is particularly simple. So we only have the transmitter and the antenna, no cable, nothing. And on the receiver, we just have the receiving antenna, filter, and amplifier, and the receiver. So it's um, in the reality, most likely your scheme will be much complicated than this. But here there are all the elements that play a role. And you will see in a moment, the most important part here, probably unexpected is the amplifier. In fact, when we performed the analysis at system level using a tool named the EMIT, we find out several channels causing interference on the L1 band. And uh, we also uh, calculated the interference margin that goes from uh, 1.6 to 34.1, 34.2 dB of the interference, which is a very, very serious. This is influenced certainly by the antenna-to-antenna -antenna coupling, 
by the selectivity of the receiver, but also by the amplifier. Okay, so this was the results of the analysis. You see that the fourth harmonic uh, fall in the uh, in the receiving band of the receiver, and the power of the fourth harmonic uh, at the transmitter is larger than the sensitivity. So when we look at what has been received uh, before the filter due to the path loss and due to the antenna coupling, well, the fourth harmonic does not fall in the band anymore. So we are happy of what happened before the filter. And after the filter, we even more happy. There is no problem after the filter because of the uh, attenuation introduced by the antenna to antenna coupling and the attenuation due to the filter, uh, the um, received power is well below the sensitivity of the receiver. So we are happy with this. But suddenly there is the amplifier and the amplifier, which is, by the way, necessary in the GPS receiving chain because of the sensitivity of the receiver and because of the fact that uh, the GPS signal are very low. And we need to use this amplifier so we cannot eliminate the amplifier for the receiving chain. Well, suddenly what happens before the receiver, the noise coming from the transmitter was amplified at the level that goes inside the, pass, the, the, the band of the receiver. Even in, in, in principle, the transmitter will not induce noise if the amplifier was there the amplifier was the, the responsible for it, and we cannot just delete the amplifier. And that a, a more clear picture of what's going on, the power and the amplifier compared with the sensitivity of the receiver. And this is another way to look at it in terms of any margin, which is just the difference between the power received and the sensitivity of the receiver. So what we will do now, well, good. Uh, very easy. So why do not add a filter to the transmitter, which this is a low pass filter that will actually cut out the power of the fourth harmonic. And um, basically a, a, a low pass filter, uh, if we, we think is at the perfect one, will actually do the job. But when we do take the rear filter and we put in our simulation, and since we want to be absolutely sure that the filter works and we measure the filter. So we look at the out of but the in-band uh, behavior of the filter was just perfect. It gives us more than 50, minus 50 B attenuation out of band. But out of band was not for all the frequency. Out of band was minus 50 dB was just at one gigahertz. And then the filter restarts as it should be, to increase again. And so at the frequency of interest is much less than negative 50 dB. So the performance degradate exactly where we, are, we, we want to use it. And um, uh, again here, without uh, the synergy between the measurement and the simulation, I will never discover this problem. And the problem is that using the, this pass filter, the commercial of the sharp pass filter, I will not solve the problem of my receiver. So the noise will be will still be there. Uh, and, and what I do, I use another filter. I make my, uh, my uh, measurements. I discover that the behavior of this second filter, by the way, the second filter was from Dayton Granger, but again, it's just uh, uh, by accident that it was this particular commercial uh, filter. But, but the message here is, again, uh, to do, to discover the problem, we don't need any uh, sophisticated model. To uh, assess the problem, we need to increase the fidelity of our modeling. To solve the problem, we need the high fidelity of the model, the, the high, a, a, an high fidelity model. And uh, um, this increase of fidelity goes through 
the uh, process. Uh, at the beginning, we will use a simple, then we will increase the fidelity, increase the fidelity up to the finding the solution. Um, and the solution was that the results are much better now. The very last thing about the synergy between uh, uh, measurements and simulation is about the transmitter and the receiver. So what is very important to know is that uh, whenever we, is, we do radio frequency interference, uh, one of the main player is of course the transmitter uh, as uh, the source of problem. And one of the main player as a victim of the problem is the uh, receiver. For the transmitter, it's important to know the uh, transmitted spectrum, including the uh, harmonics and the spurious. And for the receiver, it's important to know the sensitivity mask, not only in the receiving band, but also out of band. Making measurements of uh, out of band mode, accurate measurements of out of band model is quite complicated. We recently published a couple of paper on a system named automated the radio measurement system that uh, provide uh, an automatic uh, uh, way to obtain a model for the transmitter and the receiver in band and out of band that we believe could be uh, of interest of our community for people that are interested in uh, radio frequency interference analysis. But uh, this is the last uh, slide. Oh, no, sorry. <clears throat> just, just let me wrap up uh, my presentation and then we can open the session for question and answer. So we have spoken about simulation versus modeling. Uh, in my personal experience, uh, I do use two golden rules. I got my salary from simulation. I never believe simulation. I always doubt about those nice uh, picture and video. And I always ask myself why these are correct. Uh, actually, I use the same approach also with measurements. And finally, my real golden rule is in Maxwell, I trust. So whatever I look for, measurement simulation, I ask myself, would this be compliant with Maxwell equation? If yes, I would believe it. Analytical method is a powerful tool. Use it. Do not give up to make your homework. Do not give up to do your calculation with your end calculator or a simple Excel uh, sheet. Do it because this will drive you in your work. Radio frequency interference does not is not an antenna to antenna coupling problem. Everything matters, including the transmitter and the receiver. And modeling and measurements are not two enemies. They are two powerful allied if you make them working together. If you have any question or if you have any inquiries that I will not be able to answer during the question and answer session, do not hesitate to reach me. My email is Giancarlo at imatridi.com. Or you can reach me through Dr. Ashutosh Keda if you need. And that the end of my presentation. So I guess we can open for question and answer if any. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Giancarlo for a nice presentation. Uh, now uh, there are some uh, questions. I request audience to uh, type the questions in the cha chat box so that uh, we can read it out. And uh, Mr. Giancarlo will be answering. As of now, we have got two questions, sir. Shall I read it out? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, what kind of materials are used to generally reduce the interference between antennas when installed in a multi antenna system? Uh, could, could you repeat it? Sorry. What kind of materials are used to generally uh, to reduce the interference between antennas when installed in a multi antenna system? Okay, so the, the, the question is about eventual material to be used to, to yes. reduce coupling. Okay, so well, um, the, the usage of, of uh, absorbing material um, is not that 
useful in certain application, like uh, at least for what I know. So what what we need to use to reduce the interference and the uh, and the antenna to antenna coupling is to do a, a, a correct placement to change uh, the antenna type. But um, mo most of the time we can we cannot put uh, material. Uh, to, to, to reduce this. So what, where we, we work more is uh, at the transmitting and receiver side and to move the antenna a little bit. The, the placement of the antenna sometimes uh, it, it cannot be changed too much. So if you have a, 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 a sat com antenna must be on the top, on the, on the upper uh, fuselage. A, a marker beacon must be on the lower fuselage, and you can move uh, on your aircraft, but not that much. So um, e even moving the antenna sometimes does not help too much, uh, and everything is be adding filters or using um, receivers or change the channels or doing uh, implementing solution like that. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question is from uh, Kirti Priya is, uh, today we have multiple methods of simulations like uh, integrated, uh, integ integral equation methods and the method of moments, finite element method. How do we choose yes. method to use for solving efficiently? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. Okay, so the, um, we, we have to distinguish between commercial software and numerical methods. So many of the commercial software today offer uh, many solvers. So in the mom, most mom solver, uh, time domain solver, FEM and others, the PO, PTD, uh, GTD, SBR plus, and others. So the, the, the selection of the methods depends on the data you have, on the input data you have, and on the dimension of the platform. So if the, 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 the platform is a very large compared to the wavelength, most likely you are going to use an asymptotic method. Either if the two antennas are in line of sight, uh, you can use a physical optics. If the two antennas and uh, or iterative PO. Uh, and if the, the antennas are not in direct line of sight, you can use uh, shoot and bouncing rays or a geometrical theory of diffraction. If the, 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 the platform is small, is medium small compared with the wavelength, then the full wave method can be used. Either uh, integral equation like MOM solver, FEM or uh, FDTD. Nevertheless, in, in the practice, the best uh, rule to follow is try to use two different methods to the same problem. So when it's possible, use a FEM and also time domain technique, or use a FEM and physical optics, or any other combination to cross-check the results. So when the results of two different methods are consistent, and all of these are consistent with the theory, then you can be confident. But the, 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 the main, the, the most important golden rule for the selection of the, of the, of the numerical method is the electrical dimension of the plot. And of course, you must be aware about the limitation of the method you use. So if you use a integral equation, most likely you will consider it only the scheme of the aircraft. And if this is not appropriate, better to go for FEM or FDT. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And uh, now one more question is, uh, yeah, so. Uh, okay, after so, this, I have a question, actually. Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Please go ahead. Finish it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what about the conducted emissions? I think uh, Reddit emissions are covered. What about the conducted emissions? Like uh, you have many RF components along with the antennas. So, there mm -hmm. may be some conducted emissions also. I mean, talk about yes. interference. So, yes, of course. Yes, yeah. it's a very good point, especially for aircraft, but not only for aircraft. The harness 
play a very important role. Uh, the cables play a very important role. Um, so, in, in this, especially in the certification process or in the EMC general uh, certification of uh, devices, keep, uh, conducted emission, uh, especially when there is complicated cable, are very important and must be taken into account. Uh, it, Personally, in our company, this is the most important part of our experiences in conducted emission because cable play a very significant role in lightning problem, in info problem, in EMC problem. So, must be taken into account. Is out of the scope of my presentation, but yes, it's a, it's a very important uh, problem and need to be taken. Thank you, Ashutosh, sir. Yeah. You can go ahead and ask. Yeah. Uh, I have one question, like. Uh... See, as you rightly said that uh, the number of antennas are increasing these days open to the different applications and all. So now the nowadays the researchers are proposing the concept of the shared aperture antennas or sparse ray antennas. So I just want to know like uh, the kind of interference and the uh, saturation issues being brought up by you in the receivers and transceivers. How does the shared aperture uh, antenna will help in this? Do they really help or it's just uh, over rating of the system of shared aperture uh, shared aperture system so so you mean a large aperture antenna yeah i mean a aperture of antenna where the same aperture is giving the different functionalities instead of putting like four antennas we can have a single ah, aperture yes. yeah. this, this is that's a very good point ashutosh this is in fact one of the solution especially for small aircraft um, Nowadays, uh, we are observing a very amazing increase of uh, VTOL light craft, vertical takeoff and landing, small light craft for urban mobility. They should have on board the several antennas, but there is no room, no space to put these antennas, uh, different antennas together. So one solution, and probably the most important one, is to have one antenna sharing several services at the same time. So one antenna for many services. In this way, some of the problem that I discussed just goes away. So this is something that the community needs to, to take into account and uh, explore this uh, possibility. Integrating the same antenna, many services will be one of the most important uh, uh, aspect to, to investigate uh, today and in the near future. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, one more participant, Sindhu. Uh, Madam, can you type the question in the chat box? Sindhu, Madam. Mesh, can I ask one question? Yeah, yeah, please, sir, please. Dr. Chandrakan, sir, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Giancarlo, for your nice presentation, sir. I've brought up the nice uh, aspects of uh, system level engineering. I just want to uh, know. Your experience with the spacecraft, where the modeling and all, uh, it is always approximate because of the multi-layer insulations that we use. And uh, while launching uh, those multi-layer in insulations, they uh, flare up and all these things. Based on your experience, can you share how accurate your simulation and the all to get? Okay, I, 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 I lost you for the so I, I'm asking about multi-layer MLI uh, measure, M, uh, MLI simulation, multi-layer uh, what, what I'm trying to get an idea, say uh, we do some simulations uh, for the spacecraft and when it is getting launched, and uh, yes. in actual condition, whatever simulation we keep, that doesn't match. So, what is your experience in that? Whether you are okay. you are taking. Okay. So, I, I only had one experience about this. Uh, so, we did a project for the European Space Com uh, Agency, and I worked in uh, my previous uh, company, Ingegneria dei Sistemi, in Italy. Uh, so, previous then IMA. We did a, a project for uh, the European community to take into account the effect of the, uh, the MLI uh, on the far field pattern of an antenna mounted on board of a, of a satellite. 
So we model the MLI as a stochastic uh, surfaces, and we got some uh, distortion of the pattern, but we did not investigate uh, farther than this, or at least I don't know what is the status now. But I'm sorry, I do not have a good answer for you, which is a very important question. Okay, okay thank you. You're welcome. So, a question has come from one of the participants. Uh, she uh, simulated adultery content of high frequency, uh, for example, 70 gigahertz, which would require a large RAM size. And the simulation time uh, as the machine will be fine for high frequency. Which solver is the best to reduce the RAM requirement and simulation time? So, the, 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 the question is about simulating an antenna at 70 gigahertz. Uh, place it yes. on on a platform, SBR yes. plus, asymptotic meters. That's the, she must use asymptotic meters. Uh, she can want to try SBR plus as a technique, but in any case, I would suggest to use asymptotic meters. Um, it, it, uh, so I mean something like a ray tracer at that frequency, especially if uh, uh, the need is considered the entire platform. And we have seen also simulation da uh, done with uh, integral equation solver. So if, if after this, um, uh, the person who made this question can contact me by mail, I can share with her some of the results I've seen. But certainly I will go for uh, uh, ray tracing before and then eventually integral equation and so on. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, we are not having any other questions. Uh, first, we conclude? Yes. Yeah, yeah, please do. Uh, Dr. Chandrakant, sir, you would like to add something? Uh, no, it's a really wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the Umbrella, for taking out your time. Thank to you for. And it should be very used to the uh, people who are uh, really started working in this field. It's system level engineering is a very important aspect. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank uh, you for the possibility. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gian Tolo, for your time and uh, uh, for your uh, presentation, nice presentation. And uh, mm -hmm. I would like to thank Ashutosh Kedar, sir, uh, for organizing a very nice uh, talk from Mr. Gian And I also thank all the APMP uh, members and also all the participants who attended this workshop. Uh, so I think we'll uh, close the session. Thank you very much, everyone. Yes. Thank, thank you, Jim Carlo. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ashutosh. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a good day, all of you. Thank you. The same to you. Bye.